So good news everybody, this week I'm not actually super hungover for the recording of this show. Hooray! Professionalism for the win. I say professionalism, the reason I'm feeling so bloody good this afternoon is because I'm already balls deep into my scotch supplies. Cheers! But anyhow, gee willikers, what a show we have for you fine folk this week. If you like stuff that isn't quite a laptop, and isn't quite a tablet, we've got a bit of that. If you like big phones, we've got two of the buggers. I'm talking proper seven inches here as well, so definitely brace yourself for painfully predictable knob jokes. Does that count as an intro? Do I even give a f Roll jingle! Techspert Weekly! So the big launch this week came courtesy of Microsoft, who announced, oh my god, all of the things. Seriously, I'm not even going to try and cover it all here, because let's face it, you got things to do, I've got things to do. Very important things, it's a very big day. I mean, this whiskey ain't going to drink itself, for one. And I'm also on to Act 2 of Ghosts of uh, Shishi... Shishima? Shishimo? Shishima. That shit is seriously, I just, I don't tend to do open world games because between filming and editing these highbrow tech videos and other life shenanigans, it's like, no, I don't want to spend an hour of my evening running chores for some random guy that I only just met when I happen to wander into his house looking for shit to steal. But I can certainly make time for samurai dudes sneaking into forts and creeping up on oblivious gods before shoving a dagger into their heads via that fleshy bit just under the jaw over and over and over. So good. The Surface Pro 8 is another laptopy tablet or tablety laptop, now with a larger 13-inch display. It's sharper and brighter than previous models with support for Dolby Vision content and 120Hz refresh for apps and games that can handle it. And yeah, there is an upgraded slim pen with a haptic motor now that provides tactical feedback when you're sketching away. An 11th gen Intel Core i5 or i7 chipset runs the show, where you also have a pair of Thunderbolt 4 ports slapped on there, impressive shiz for such a compact device. And unsurprisingly, all of that shiny tech ain't cheap. The Surface Pro 8 costs from a grand here in Blighty. Ugh. If you're after something a bit more compact, or you certainly don't have that much cash to spaff, then there's always the fresh Surface Go 3, a 10.5 inch device with a similar design to the Pro 8 that should still satisfy. The specs are generally downgraded, but the Go should keep you entertained, no worries, and handle simple apps and web-based activities without cacking itself all for just 369 quid. Now, Microsoft obviously took its sweet effing time bringing its original Surface Duo foldable phone to this grey little island, but good news everybody who happens to live here. The fresh new Surface Duo 2 smartphone will be coming here to the UK in just under a month, although it ain't exactly cheap starting from 1,349 quid, so eesh, yeah, whoo. Those two 5.8 inch AMOLED screens are separated by a hinge still, so it's not a seamless design like Samsung's Galaxy Fold, but those 90Hz panels do look rather stunning and feature Gorilla Glass Victor's protection. You got Snapdragon 888 Smarts, a triple lens rear camera with OIS and a telephoto shooter capable of 2 times optical zoom, plus a funky glance screen stuffed away on the edge so you can see when your family is messaging you and then just totally ignore them. And if you thought the Microsoft was done there, no, they launched plenty of other bits at the event as well, including the uh, Surface Laptop Studio, an even more powerful version of the Pro 8 for more demanding users, and a mouse made of uh, recycled bottles or something. But I think we're probably good to move on. Now, HMD is rumoured to be finally launching a new Nokia-branded flagship phone any day now, but in the meantime, it's spaffed out a fresh new budget blower, the G50, which at 199 quid is one of the cheapest Nokia handsets of 2021. This absolute Godzilla is 6.82 inches, so good luck using it one-handed or squeezing it into your pants. That's a 720p display while a Snapdragon 480 chipset runs the show and does the job fine when you want to take out the frustrations of your pointless existence by perforating some hapless bozo's face with virtual lead. You've also got a 5000 mAh battery which has the stain power of Sting after snorting a whole row of mashed up blue pills, plus a 48 megapixel main camera sensor that I tested out with some help from my erstwhile assistant, Veronica. And if that super hot description has got your nipples on a 10 out of 10 on the perkiness scale, well, my full unboxing and hands-on tour is live right now. And also this week, Roku just launched an upgraded version of its 4K tele streamer with a Meteor processor, stronger and smarter Wi-Fi, plus Dolby Vision support, all for just 50 quid here in Blighty. Now I've just got to check if the Fetish channel has finally started doing 4K content. Definitely can't wait to check out some belly button jizz fest in stunning Ultra HD. 
And also, uh, OnePlus CEO Pete Lau admitted this week that we won't be seeing a OnePlus 9T series smartphone this year. So that means that the next OnePlus flagship smartphone we're likely to see is going to be the OnePlus 10 in 2022. And that's not necessarily a bad thing because, you know, a six month flagship cycle is a bit much. And the fact that we won't have OnePlus 9T means it might actually get a little bit of time off in October now. Besides, of course, obviously Google's big Pixel launch, that Nokia flagship phone is likely to come along, like the Xiaomi 12, the Samsung Galaxy S21 Fan Edition. There's a big Sky TV launch, while we're doing some laptops, uh, some wearables coming around, and of course, about half a dozen bloody Motorola's. Ah. Potentially worse news is that OnePlus's Oxygen OS launcher is apparently going to get busy with the Color OS launcher that Oppo uses on its smartphones, and together the two will produce some kind of hybrid bastard offspring that will henceforth be seen on all Oppo and OnePlus smartphones and it might work out okay or it might be some hideous monster child akin to the scrotum baby from Nightmare on Elm Street 5. And of course only time will tell but yeah my spurty sense is definitely tingling on this one kiddies. And I could just be the scotch egg that I had for lunch but I'm not overly optimistic. But anywho, that's more than enough tech shenanigans for one week, which distressingly means it is time for the part of the show that makes Mrs. Brown's boys look like an intellectual work of art. It's fewer comments. Time to go refill the f***ing scotch. Fewer comments. Alrighty hoes, let's start with uh, S. Nice, simple uh, user tag name there, uh, who says, What a legend. Even when totally hungover, the show must go on. Brave man, Chris, though your eyes do appear to be getting smaller as the video goes on. Uh, yeah, I mean, no kidding, they were pretty much pinpricks by the end of that one. Remember, don't drink kiddies, or just don't drink and then shoot a shitty tech news roundup the following morning. Uh, next up, Daryl says, Ha ha ha, I remember the walkabout in Leeds a long time ago. I think I recall seeing Veronica in there. Never, sir, that must have been some other disembodied mannequin head you're thinking of there, because Veronica is far too classy a girl to be caught hanging around a joint like a walkabout. She's definitely more of an all bar one kind of girl. Two for one Prosecco Thursdays, who's with me? And next up, RMG says, I knew you were still going to complain about the iPhone 13's notch. Hey, look, I'll stop ripping the piss out of the iPhone's notch when that notch stops resembling a freshly laid cat turd. Uh, next up, Ryan says, greetings from Aruba. Now, come on, guys, we talked about this already, okay? I don't need to be hearing from all you jammy twats who live in some gorgeous sun-kissed island in the Caribbean Sea. All right, just lie to me and pretend you live in Milton f***ing Kings or something. Uh, next up, Roman says, will you be reviewing the Fossil Gen 6 watch? Even though its software is a disappointment, I would still be intrigued. Yeah, 100%. I know that some of the US guys have already bloody reviewed it. I've been in touch with the UK guys, and apparently the samples are arriving end of this week, so hopefully not too long. And as it is, I'm still working on my Samsung Galaxy Watch 4, uh, classic uh, review so hopefully that won't be too much longer and I do have another smartwatch another two smartwatches in fact uh, stacked up in the review pile waiting to be uh, taken out of the box as well so hooray I'm suddenly getting glimpses of myself with like four smartwatches strapped to my arms uh, before I get mugged in f***ing Bromley. Uh, George says, You look like a Bulgarian who once had a full set of hair and listened to lots of metal, but has since moved to Australia and pretends to be bold and interested in tech so that the Bulgarian mafia won't find him. I mean, that is a far more interesting backstory than my actual life, so yeah, I might have to adopt that as canon. Out of curiosity though, what did I actually do to piss off the Bulgarian mafia so bad? You know, we really got to put some meat on these bones here. Like, maybe my flat could have been right next door to their HQ, and I kept blasting my metal music every time they met up to, you know, do whatever the Hungarian Mafia does. I don't know, stealing tractors or whatever. Uh, Rapids444 says, Thanks for the weekly roundup. Can't wait until you review the Pixel 6. Yeah, me too. And it must be really, really soon, because it's like leaks every other day, pretty much, at the moment. Although I see they've actually put them on display uh, in glass casings inside the Google Store in New York. Those cra crazy morphos before they've even bloody launched the things. Uh, Spirit Soldier says, could you review old flagship phones to see if they're worth using in 2021? Uh, yeah, I used to love doing that back in the day. I do still occasionally try and review a flagship smartphone from the previous year, you know, 12 months on to see if they still hold up well, especially as usually have a few hundred quid shaved off the price when the new flagships come out. But there's just so many new phones coming out. Like seriously, somebody pisses out a new handset every five seconds. Uh, at the moment, so I'm really struggling to get back to the older kit, uh, but I'll certainly try my best. And Mr. Gonzanator says, Don't know why, but I keep getting ads for men's undercarriage grooming apparatus. Would you go so far as to tackle some comparison videos for us? Tackle? I see what you did there. Did you happen to start getting these ads after watching my videos by any chance? Because, I, yeah, hands up, I do talk about the old cock and balls 
quite a bit. Myself, of course, I am expertly groomed in that department. I actually wax my pubes. They look like Goku's hair at Dragon Ball Z. I'm not sure about uh, comparing grooming products though, because first of all, I'm not really sure how I would demonstrate how good the grooming products are without basically just getting my knob out. It's probably one for the OnlyFans page, I guess. I actually know what OnlyFans is now, thanks to this show. You know, we, we, it's, it's a learning experience for everyone. Uh, David says, Oh, Uncle Spurt, you silly sausage. Hopefully you're feeling better soon. R.I.P. Sir Clive Sinclair, eccentric British boffin. Yeah, 100%. R.I.P. Sir Sinclair, absolute legend. The ZX Spectrum was what got me into gaming and also basically turned me into a coding spod. And on a similar note, uh, John Paul says, Have you had any dealings with the full-sized or the mini Commodore 64 consoles? I had a C64 back in the day, playing games like Summer Games, Boulder Dash, Paperboy, Time Crisis, Frank Bruno's slash Barry McGuigan's boxing etc thought about buying one for reminiscent purposes um, yeah no sadly I never had a C64 back in the day I was a ZX Spectrum boy through and through but of course many of the games like some uh, Boulder Dash and Paperboy of course were crossover absolutely loved Paperboy and Paperboy 2 I seem to recall which was I think essentially the same game except a slightly different color shade yeah just checking out the uh, the C64 mini on Amazon just 40 quid and I love how you get a proper old school joystick bundled in there as well now that is proper class got 720p output via HDMI love it Nobby the Oddvark will never have looked so splendid has to be said, they were not the best selection of games. I've certainly not heard of many of these. California games I used to have. Uh, Boulder Dash, of course. Cybernoid, The Impossible Missions. Uh, Monty Mall. A uh, good bit of School Days, of course. Classic. Thing on a Spring, Jesus Christ. But yeah, most of these I've never even bloody heard of. The the Ark of Yesod? What the f*** is that? Anyway, before this show literally turns into uh, me listing Commodore 64 games, let's move on. Uh, Willy Bob says, All I ever want to do is straighten out your f***ing lav mic. Be safe, mate. Yeah, I know. It's a massive pain in the arse. I really shouldn't wear it with t-shirts. I should wear shirts when I shoot a video. It'll be much easier to sort of clip it on, get it into place. But I literally have two decent shirts uh, for those rare occasions when I go for a nice night out. Uh, Jason says, Thanks to you, I bought the Xiaomi Redmi Note 10 Pro. Still a clunky name, but still a great phone, uh, which I love. And I'm shouting out to anyone that would listen. Uh, P.S. It would be great if you could get James Corden's Stalker on next week's show so we can all say, keep up the great work. Yeah, I'm kind of in two minds about James Corden's Stalker. I mean, on the one hand, she freaked him out enough that he actually went out and got a restraining order on her. So that's kind of funny. But on the flip side, she actively wants to spend time in the vicinity of James Corden. And frankly, that just terrifies me. Next up, James says, I'm definitely going to look at the Xiaomi Pad 5. But as I have a flagship smartphone, is there any point in having a tablet as well? I, I do get this question quite a lot um, and basically the answer is pretty much unless you're trying to you know do some complex photo editing or do some serious multitasking on your smartphone and you're really struggling with that smaller display then no you don't need a tablet. The only thing I really use a tablet for is I prop it up in the kitchen when I'm you know making myself a chip buddy or whatever and you know just to watch a bit of Netflix or something quite good for that. But then you literally just need the cheapest thing going like an Amazon Fire HD tablet or whatever you know 100 quid or whatever and you, know, you can stream your prime video your Netflix Disney plus whatever else. Uh, Jaded Peanut Butter says, wait, you don't shave in the shower while you're having a dump and then waffle stomp it all down the drain. Uh, yeah, that, <laughs> that right there is precisely the image that I needed embedded in my brain as we stroll into the weekend. Definitely. Waffle stomping. Yum. Uh, Brian says, what are the top five phones with a battery that will last two days or more? Uh, cost of between 150 quid and 400 quid. Uh, well, the ones that immediately spring uh, to, to mind are uh, the Doogie smartphones. They're generally quite budget friendly and they normally have ridiculously enormous batteries as well. And they're pretty rugged. So if you go on outdoors, you know, they'll survive, you know, the old tumble and such forth. I have covered a couple of them here on Techspert, not for a little while, but you definitely go check those out if, uh, if you need to know more. Uh, Nokia smartphones as well tend to be uh, quite affordable and also have, you know, really good battery life, helped along by the fact you've got stock Android and generally quite an energy efficient chipset. And next up, Lead Bomb says, Chris, what's your favourite whiskey? I mean, yeah, that is kind of like asking a raccoon what its favourite kind of garbage is. It doesn't really give a shiny sh what it's shoveling into its furry face. It just wants that hot garbage slop so, so bad. I'm really not a whiskey connoisseur, though, despite my obvious sophistication. Um, you know, I, I really enjoy a single malt. Uh, I quite enjoy a bourbon on occasion as well, usually in cocktails, though. Uh, and I really am definitely down for some sake any time of the day. And we'll give a shout out actually uh, to the Andams uh, Brewery slash Distillery in Southwark as well. Really like these guys' beer, uh, like some ghost ship and stuff. And uh, if you're looking for a whiskey that uh, doesn't come from Scotland, it is Southwold, but it's very, very, very good stuff. 
indeed as you can see i've already polished off the single malt got the rye malt lined up for next and then uh next comment kyron says does veronica's mouth open and on that bombshell, I think it's time to take viewers' comments around the back of the shed with a shotgun and put us all out of our misery and check out what's going on next week. Well, it is the Amazon launch on the evening of the Tuesday the 28th, so you can expect a slew of new devices, smart speakers, uh, Echo devices, all that kind of shenanigans. Maybe even a cheeky Kindle or two, and probably something that's absolutely batshit mental on those guys as well. And also next Thursday, it's a big Vivo launch, the global launch, the X70 series. So definitely stay tuned for more on those smartphones. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Should have some uh, hot content coming at you. And that's it, I think, as far as the actual events go next week. But I do have several briefings as well. It's really ramping up to be a busy October. Lots of big things going on. Uh, so definitely exciting times. Make sure you poke subscribe and ding that notifications bell to be the first to see all that sh** going live anyhow a huge thank you to all you wonderful folk for a watching this drivel and b commenting last week as well uh apologies if we didn't get to your comment please do smash your thoughts remarks questions queries whatever you want down below and we'll try and cover off as many of those as possible in next week's viewer comments but for now have a fantastic weekend and stay safe and love you